The following interview was conducted with Gary Crum for the Purdue University Oral History Project. It took place on October 28, 2017 at Boilermaker Station in Purdue Memorial Union. The interviewer is Adriana Harmeyer. Gary, could, to get us started, could you tell me where you're from and when you attended Purdue and what you studied here? Um, I'm from Frankfort, Indiana, mm-hmm. and I uh, attended Purdue, let me see, the um, 1986, graduated in 80, December 89. Okay. And I studied uh, agriculture. Started out animal science and then made a transition to agronomy, turf grass, and finished up there. Turf grass? And is that the field you went into professionally? It is. It is. And I was fortunate enough to uh, start a small lawn care business while I was here at my days at Purdue mm-hmm. and found that uh, the staff was very helpful in, in, in making that possible. Fantastic. Do you continue to have a relationship with the department at Purdue? I do, and that has been key. Um, I will tell anybody that key to the success has been uh, having a great mentors, people that have taken an interest in me mm-hmm. and um, helping me along in that process. So it would not have been possible without uh, great staff, great family of people in the School of Ag mm-hmm. that took a young person took an interest in me and helped me along the way. Are there any particular people that stand out? You know, <clears throat> I could. some of them are still here, some of them have, have, have moved on, but really it was not only in uh, the School of Animal Science, uh, but really all the way through. I could name um, numerous people, but really each person along the way gave me that, even though Purdue is, is, I've heard many people say, oh, Purdue is this large institution, you get lost here. There's 30,000, 36,000, I don't know, 40,000 people plus that attend here now. And I would quickly tell them, that's not the case at all. You find, or these people find you. The School of Ag is, is, is filled with wonderful people that invite you to their home and through ice cream socials and great opportunities to meet people and it's a family mm-hmm. and that's we, we say that a lot and it gets kind of you know somewhat uh, oh we've heard that before at other institutions but it's really true and these people um, take an interest open door policy it was one of those things with, that uh, um, you know if I'm not in my office the door is open come on in and it was always that kind of spirit that that uh, was always inviting. Mm-hmm. And you could always find an answer. Somebody would help you. And that's that's been the biggest win for me. People, relationships that I still have today that I can pick up the phone and 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 help mm-hmm. get help readily available. That's wonderful. Did you live on campus as a student? I did. <clears throat> I found it. Uh, Started out in um, Tarkington Hall mm-hmm. and had great experiences there. Moved to Apartments North, which was Rossade Apartments that were up the hill. Uh-huh. You might call it something different today. Um, and then finished up, moved off campus in my junior year, and then back to Young Grad House, which mm-hmm. I found to be a lot of fun also. So on and off campus, but um, always close by within walking distance I never did uh, have to take a bus or something and I thought I found that to be incredibly um, convenient Mm -hmm. a lot of kids talk about well I'll commute I'm talking to a young person now that I'm trying to get on campus because I want them to have the same experience that I have had Mm -hmm. meeting people all over the world creating different conversations or having different conversations with people I found that is as rewarding as anything. Mm-hmm. Different thought processes, different people. Um, I come from a small town, and so to me, West Lafayette was the big city, which is kind of a laugh. But and nevertheless, uh, was was uh, instrumental. And in, I think about those relationships that I that I made, and in the dorm all the way back to my freshman year, mm-hmm. and great great people. 
did you join any clubs as a student? I was, um, because I was trying to start a business, or did start a business, I was carrying 21 credit hours on two days, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I was going to school from 7 in the morning to 10 at night. Wow. And then trying to run the business Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I did join the agronomy club. If I have any... My, my kids always say, do you, do you have any regrets? If you could go any other institution, my son is a, uh, a very accomplished pole vaulter. So he other, he's a senior this year, and other universities are, are looking out, Stanford and Notre Dame and Purdue, and, and the list is, is long. But they always say, well, if you could go any place and do it over, would you go any place differently? And the answer to that is no. I had great, great uh, times here, and it was as, as rewarding as, as any place, I think. For me at that time, the clubs I didn't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So back to where that question originally started. Do, I wish I'd had if I had anything to do over a little bit. I wish I would have spent more a little bit more time with clubs, a little bit more time taking in a football game on Saturday, mm -hmm. which I which, which I didn't get to do. I do now, um, but that's my only regret. It's just a little. I feel just a touch. Like I should have spent a little more time there. Now, mm -hmm. um, it, but it wasn't to, to make it all happen. Um, I did the best I could. It so no, that's like my that's my only that's my only. Uh, if I had a do over button, I wish I would have taken in a couple more football games or mm -hmm. taken in some. So you didn't really attend sporting events at I all. I did not. We did go to some basketball events that were during the week mm -hmm. on Wednesday. I had season tickets, so we did take in those. Um, but when the weekend came, I was off campus or commuting back to try to run the business. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, were there any places on campus between classes while you're studying that you really like to spend your time? I, I always liked the union, mm -hmm. the sweet shop, we called it, and it's probably called something else today. But back in the late 80s, it was a sweet shop, and it was a wonderful place to, to study and meet people and, and, and do your study groups. Um, there was a you know places for sandwiches, places for get something quick to eat, an arcade mm -hmm. for just to blow off steam. So the union was a always a an, an inviting place. Mm -hmm. In between class, you could always find a couch or someplace to 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 um, relax. Mm -hmm. And that tradition carries on. Anytime you walk through the union, it's it's still the same. I think. What about Purdue do you think has changed the most over the years? Mm, that's a good question. My first rapid uh, answer would be uh, all the one-way streets. Mm -hmm. How to get around. I'm like, wow. So now I'm asking my kids, now where do I turn? Now, you know, that's that's the quick one. But changing, um, some of the faces have changed staff-wise, which we expect that. Mm -hmm. um, anytime... You know, in, I guess in the past, you know, I was somewhat, oh, I hate to see that person leave or that. But now we know a change is good. We, that's, it has to happen. Mm -hmm. And we have to evolve. Um, I think Mitch Daniels has done a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Change as far as um, getting a high caliber individual like him, former governor to Purdue, I think is, is fantastic. Never dreamed that man would be on the radar, but I'm a huge supporter of mm -hmm. what he's done for Indiana and what he's doing for Purdue. A quality education, hey, at, I've, I've shopped all over the, uh, the country at different universities. Purdue is top-notch for the dollar. Anyone will tell you that. You can go to the West Coast, you can go to the East Coast. You mentioned Purdue University. Everybody knows Purdue University, mm -hmm. and I think Mitch has done a great job. Here, I'm calling him like his first name basis, um, but at twenty two thousand dollars plus or minus, I think it's I think it's a bargain. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Is there anything about Purdue that you think should get more attention, or isn't as widely recognized as it should be? Hmm. You know, um, academically, I think sometimes we sell ourselves a little short. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go to Ivy League schools and things. I think we are just as good as a Yale or a Stanford or a Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. 
you throw us in there, I think um, we don't talk about it as much. And I think we should mm -hmm. because I'm having conversations with uh, people as I'm researching opportunities for my son and the conversation was coming back here to Purdue. So for a state funded school, I think we ought to be talking about how prestigious it is to get in here mm -hmm. and what it's really uh, going to do for you or me as, 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 a, as, a, as a student and then a, a future alumni. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most. I don't think we tell, talk about how, at what an academic powerhouse we are. And um, we're just as good as, or better than, than, than the Ivies, which, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I just think we need to talk about it more. That's a great answer. Um, now, you mentioned you were very busy while you were a student, and it's really easy for that time to, to blur together because, you know, you're constantly going. Do you have any specific memories or moments from your time as a student that really stand out to you? Moments or memories? Um, I, I can remember um, a, lot of, a lot of good memories, a lot of good people, a lot of good opportunities, but I also remember a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. Challenges where, you know, trying to make it all happen academically, and run into business where you just didn't think that you could do it. And moments where, you know, you didn't think, is it, is it really worth it, you know? Um, turning points, tipping points. Mm -hmm. um, my son would call that the cul-de-sac, where you feel like there's a dead end and you don't feel like you're in, but there's always, that's just a dip. Mm -hmm. um, for me, uh, that happened, you know, you know, just before my uh, the conclusion of my senior year, when you're trying to cram everything in, make it all happen. But the greatest moment for me is graduation, knowing that you've that you've done this. And for me, I was the first out of my family to graduate from college. I say family, meeting media family, mm -hmm. and how proud I was to make that happen. If somebody said, "List your accomplishments." Graduating from Purdue is, is is top of the list for me, and so um, great great memories, but challenging, mm -hmm. challenging, not not high school, not not just you know it was the chemistry, it was it was the mathematics, it was it was hard, mm -hmm. it was hard, it was challenging, and I'm glad it was. I'm glad it was. You know, Mitch Daniels, my daughter. Uh, started a freshman class, and I remember him saying, "In his uh, when he was during orientation, it will be challenging." And I love that Purdue's uh, continuing to be a science-driven institution, mm -hmm. and I think that's a huge way of separating Purdue from others, other institutions. So. Mm -hmm. Well, do you have any last uh, comments or thoughts? Anything you'd like to share about Purdue? Probably the 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 one thing that I want every person or many people that are considering coming here over someplace else is that you will not get lost in the numbers. I've heard numerous times, oh, you know, class size. I've heard other smaller institutions use that as a marketing tool. Student professor ratio. I think that is incredibly untrue. Meaning, that's a selling point that I think um, Purdue is is much better than that. Whether you're coming into a chemistry class when there's a hundred people or two hundred, down to a small lecture of twenty, you're going to get that individualized. Know that professor on that na uh, first name basis. And you will not get lost in the numbers. And I've heard that over and over and over again. Oh, if I go there, I'll just be a number. No, you're not. They'll know you by your name. You will get invited to their home. You'll be a part of their family. And that's where I think um, Purdue has such a wonderful, and especially, I'll say it one more time, for the School of Agriculture. There was never a time that I didn't feel like that I wasn't um, 
a part of, of the organization and always help was available. Help was always available. People were always there to willingly to, to lend a hand and uh, that's the biggest thing I can tell you is do not be intimidated by the size because good people are here and they will help you. Fantastic. Well, thank you for talking to me today. Thank you.